Hey everyone, it is Char from Char's Fascination and I may actually just take off my glasses for part of this because it just really makes it too shiny right here. Um, today, ha, 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 today I'm actually sewing together my mock-up pants. Now I will end up changing the thread out to this thread, which is the thread I was looking for because that's a closer color, right? But for now, because I'm just doing the pockets, I'm doing the thread that I already have in the machine, but that's because this is in the pockets and nobody's gonna see the thread that I have up here in the spool. No one's gonna see this. So, and it's mock-ups. Only one that's going to say that is me. So we're going to get started on this. Like I said, unfortunately, when my other um, laptop, you know, you know the story on that. Anyway, there's no reason to even repeat that. Da, da, da. And we'll just keep going forward. Oh, it looks like I already have a spool of red thread. So look, I'm in look. You know what that's a good sign that is a sign of good things anyway so let's go forward since that that's a sign of good things right so we have our little sewing scissors They're not those little stylish ones with the bird but hey I got them And now on this, I am using an overlocker stitch, which is a very steady stitching. If you have been on my channel long enough to know that I will use a steady stitching. And a lot of people don't like to use this little piece on here. Well, it's there for a reason, people. Utilize it. Now, um, that's the stitching. And it's only going to be seen from the inside. Nobody's going to be looking at the inside of my pants. Because I don't have anybody. So, um, <laughs> and I don't care. Look, see, do you see the threads? No. It's a clean stitch. And that is a very steady stitch. And now that's going to stay. And then we'll do the other side of this real quick. And you're like, why does that not look even? You know what? Like I said, these are mock-up pants. I'm not, you know, really, I'm not really worried about it um, right now because they're a mock-up. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it a half an inch away from the edge. I can go an inch in if I want, which, you know, a lot of people would. And that would be great for my hand anyway, but I'm going to go that half inch because it's the pocket and I do want to give it some ease but at the same time I don't want to give it too much ease if you know what I mean I did notice in my video when I was trying these on that my stay stitch for one of the sides was not staying where I actually wanted the stitch to stay. But again, it's mock-up pants and I'm not really all that worried. Is that not why we make mock-ups? I'm going to lift this for a minute because I need to actually make this fabric a bit taut. 
to itself and bring it down. Maybe that I'll just like leave off the edge because like, yeah. Anyway, back to this and keep sewing forward. <laughs> Now sometimes when you pull that, you'll end up with a third thread. Sometimes that does catch. And the Singer Heavy Duty 445 too, but I'm not too worried about it because I've kind of worked out the kinks with that. And um, one thing I will say that I keep near me for my sewing machine, now a lot of us will get dry hands when we're sewing. You're like, boy, do you give a lot of props to Sun City Soaps and Candles. Absolutely, this is one of their um, body butters it's in the small container. This is great for if you carry a purse. This is great for that. Um, you know, just toss it in a bag and go. Um, if your hands start to get dry while you're sewing, have one of the small ones near your sewing area that way. You can keep your hands dry and smell beautiful at the same time. Um, <laughs> and another thing that you should never forget to have near your sewing machine. Plenty of water. I have a waste basket under here, which I obviously need empty. Um, now, I'm not worried about turning this pocket in, you know, right side out because we need to leave this this way so that when people go to look in, they're actually only seeing this part of the pocket, which means you can just roll that back. And this is something I learned from an old lady that, um... You just take this, and this is how I used to do uh, pant leg cuffs when I first started, you know, uh, taking up pants for people, if that makes any sense, um, is take it like this instead of putting it on here. I used to just take it on here because she didn't have one of the machines where you could slide the piece off which you would think with the money she had. <laughs> and then I would just stitch around. Now that I'm not going to do with this thread here that I will do with the red when I switch that out. So we'll just move on to the other pocket real quick. And of course, you know, it's the same as, ooh, what fell out of here? Oh, I was looking for my straight pins. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need those. It's the same material as for the pants. So I do know I need to take up the leg a sizable amount at the cuff. I, I'm really going to need to take that up because, you know, I'm tall. But um, I can custom for uh, taller people. I really can. Um... Not a lot of tall women have access to proper to proper leg length uh, pants. We really don't. And then we just have to settle. And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of settling. Let me sew my own again. If that makes sense.
lot of you might wonder, am I going to fix my vintage sewing machine this year? Absolutely, that will be something in the works. And I really love the stitching. I mean, it's kind of looks a mess on one side, but on the other side, it's actually pretty. I really don't know what happens to that side. That, that side just goes, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? It came on a bunch of what? <laughs> That's okay. Um, like I said, I'm only going to use this thread for the inside. Um, and then switch it out. And I'm so lucky that I found that bob and, and I'll put on my glasses to like obviously re-thread the machine. I do know with the other laptop when I sewed, you actually weren't able to hear it. Um, okay, so now we have both pockets stem. We'll set that aside, uh, which means it's time to rethread this baby. Time to put my my glasses back. Oh, those are smudgy. <laughs> I should have got my lens cloth out. For my GoPro which by the way guys yes I need to get a bigger memory base chip for that before I can use my GoPro for filming so that's what's up with the GoPro I just need to do that um, there's the thread and we'll just take this bobbin out and put that aside and here's something that I like to do is make absolutely sure that when I take this off up here, now a lot of people have been saying, oh, uh, well, you know, don't put it here, put it over here. Well, I'm sorry, that's where I store an extra thread at, so no. That's for storing bobbins and spools of thread. And it always has been, um, unless you're really looking at the old, old time machines that only had it here, then that's completely different. Um, knowing that I have this bobbin threaded already, that's great to know that I already have a pre-threaded bobbin, which is great. You know, at first I thought it was my bobbins. That we're messing up on stuff. Then I also realize don't put your thread over here in the middle. Just let it hang here on the side. And why? Because that's still gonna catch. That is a lot of people say no, that's not gonna catch. It's still gonna catch. Lower the foot down, the presser foot down, okay? And this is what I love about, uh, you know what, I might look online and see if the uh, Coates and Clark Thread Company is still around. Huh. This is a... This is a cotton thread. Oh, it has the little washing instructions right there. Look, I'll put this up to the camera for you. Look at that. Where do you find this thread anymore? I hear a lot of people on YouTube saying that, you know, um, they have a problem finding the 100% cotton or they don't like using it, but this is the old school thread. This is the good stuff, not that. This is not today's thread. Today's thread 
the good thread. It's time to thread that up. <laughs> it's time to thread that up. You know what? I wonder what ever happened to Doc Tries to Sew. Girl, I haven't seen you load a video in a while. I have not seen you load a video in a while. I hope you're still on YouTube. I know you're busy by being a doctor, but I hope you're still on YouTube. Because I like when you, uh, when you sew. Um, I have fabric marks send me stuff. Um, I do. I have fabric mark sending me stuff. Hopefully I'll get to be, get up to fabric mark soon. Um, I, I love Fabric Mart. They're lovely people. Um, speaking of Fabric Mart, I really have to get my broadcloth back out for my, uh, corset and get that, that going. You will see a lot of people. I, you guys know for a fact, and this is the other reason why I keep that lotion right there. And you guys know I've done the granny spit thing for this. Um, but if you keep your hands lotion good enough, sometimes you have to clip that little fuzz end of the thread. And that's okay too. It is. How many minutes are we already into this? Really? Time flies when you're having fun. Yes, it does. Um, I can't believe it's almost 20 minutes into the, to the video and I've only gotten pockets done and I'm just chattering with you, da da da. Um, if you have your hands like pre-lotioned, sometimes it's easier just to like get that thread and like, especially after you clipped off that little fuzz end. The ends of your thread may fuzz just a little bit if they've been sitting without use and that's kind of just normal it's kind of just normal <laughs> it is it's normal you guys should know by now i will just say funny things on here it's normal <laughs> okay so i will pull these pants right side out again and then I'm going to attach the pocket. And then I, what I will do, as soon as I attach the pocket and go up, then I will turn it around and then go back down the leg. Okay? And why am I going to do this? I'm going to do this because in that area, I want to like double secure where that pocket is going to go. Look, this is going to be a wearable mock-up. And this might be in a, like, a two-part, well, more than that now. Anyway, these pants are in a, uh, parted video of sorts. Let me, uh, move this for a moment. And sometimes I like using the light when I'm sitting here at my desk. And um, I don't have that light on, so I'm just using the natural light in here, and you'll have to excuse all this. This is like assorted unboxing stuff that needs to go out. Um, it does. And I've been cleaning in my room. I've been doing spring cleaning. Who else is doing spring cleaning? I am. Um, now, this is why I said, excuse me, um... This is why I said I would need my pen. See, and I kept that in there so I wouldn't lose it. This is why I said I'd need my straight pins, but yeah, just roll that pocket back. And we could double tuck that under if we seriously wanted. And um, let me show you something real quick. Like I said, you know, I would hem that down. And the only reason I'm going to go ahead and pre-hem this down, and I'm not going to double that um, 
like I said, these are mock-ups. I'm not really, I'm not really that worried about it. I will make these as a wearable mock-up, but you also have to make sure that your stuff that you have can fit in that pocket. Your cell phone can fit in that pocket. Absolutely. So, anyway, like I was saying, before I started, you know, doing a lot of other sewing, you know, getting back into it and such, um, I learned from an old lady that, you know, you don't have to use the T-bar area on here. Um, even though it comes in handy, I absolutely love, 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 love it. Um, I do. It's one of my favorite parts of the machine. But I also love using that um, overlocker stitch. So I'm going to start sounding Australian here. <laughs> you say overlocker stitch. But no, I really do like using it because it's a very stable stitching. <laughs> And if you see, I'm actually holding this part as it's rolling. Now that way you can continue to catch and roll it with your fingers as you go and keep it consistent. Yes, this is one way to keep this consistent. Get some of that fuzz off of there. <laughs> I gotta dust my machine again. It's kind of... Because now it's when you come to that point where you need to start, you know, roll that a bit, lift your foot. Now, I know for a fact on my channel, I have a few people that were wanting to learn the sewing process. Well, you know, here you go, my friends. And, and the pants that I'm making are in fact a historical style pant so it's also aka history bounding um it's not a disney bounding thing it is a history bounding thing big difference between the two one is historical and disney well disney's disney what can i say um and I'm, I'm not doing a Disney piece. I suppose you could wear it as a Disney bounding piece if you have a character that, or similar um, pattern. I never thought about that. I know there are a lot of uh, history bounders that do Disney bound, like Rachel Maskey. She does Disney bound, but she does it so cool though. I love how Rachel does it. I know I said I would consistent around, but I was like looking at that like that might be a little uneven if I do that. Now if you find that it looks a little uneven when you go to do that at that edge, which if you look, now you can see the threads. Aha! But on this side you can't. And that's all good. That's what we want. We want to make it so nobody can see what you were sewing. Right? That's so right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. Rachel Miaski. Other than uh, Morgan Donner for history bounding. Um... sure if Morgan has done the Disney bounding but I do know Rachel has I do know that there's other few historical history bounding um, that has done the Disney bounding and I will have to uh, go back for their videos and look and that way in another video I can tell you
Rachel had them with her when she went to Disney, I think Disney World. I've only ever been to Disneyland. That's when I was a kid, though. That is, that's when I was a kid. Now this one, I can actually sew it. Until I get to that other end, and then booyah. And like I said, you know, you want to make sure that people can only see this fabric when you attach it to your pant, which is great. I mean, you don't necessarily need the needles to attach that to your pant, but I prefer to. That's just me. That's me. Um, <laughs> where did I see that? Oh, who did that? I know. Yep, that was Rachel. Dear Rachel, that's me. Um, yeah, she did that on a live stream on Instagram. I was cracking up. I was just cracking up. She's hilarious. <sighs> See, oh, yeah, here. Only done pockets. So, um, now that you see how I have fashioned the pockets here, um, so we will pocket this together. And the other video will be attaching. <laughs> As soon as I'm done with this pocket, um, then I will end this video. And I may just go ahead and attach these. And then we'll do the rest of them. Or just about done because I actually have to try to put in a zipper. I have to take out my zipper foot for this. I haven't used my zipper foot for this machine yet. Oh my gosh. It's kind of scary exciting, you know. Exciting. And we have sewing to do. The sew boat. Sewing things we never knew. See, now with this one, I know I went all the way around. Practice makes perfect. Oh, and go check out the History Bounder. I'll leave the link for yes, the History Bounder. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link for her channel. She's actually new to YouTube, so go show her some love. Um... Yeah, like, it only took 28 minutes, so, uh, just, just for pockets. So, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and attach the pocket, attach the pockets and try not to bring frog da 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 <laughs> And, um, then I will be back with, um, Finishing the sides off and uh, rolling down the top. And uh, also, since I happen to have my Taylor's chalk, I have two different colors of Taylor's chalk, but I've been thinking maybe I should get the Taylor chalk pencil the next time I have the chance to get supplies. Um, as everybody knows, I purchase my own supplies. I only get free beads. That's right, free beads. <laughs> when, um, when 
I've done a deal with people. Yes. When I deal with people in a correct manner. And that's when they actually send me extra stuff at no extra cost to moi. Isn't that the boon de va? Um, so, anyway guys, I will be back. But until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And if you guys really want to know, if you watched my most recent videos and... My friend worried about my calorie count and my weight loss. Like, if you guys remember, my Death Wish shirt was a little shorter. Like, look how long this is on me now. Serious. And. You're like, what happened to Char? <laughs> what happened to Char? Um, Char has since lost a lot of weight, and, um, part of it is, is because I was very worried about my ex-father-in-law, and then he passed away, so I am still, you know, I have him in my thoughts, even though he's no longer with us, um, but the simple fact is I had stopped eating at the same time he stopped eating, and my appetite is now picking back up. Tell me that's not a bit... I don't know. Um, I started recently getting, you know, my appetite back. Um, but I was thinking about something. Please think about this. What would your loved one want you to have in life? That they couldn't possibly give you or would rather you continue doing that they know makes you happy. Um, teaching you guys makes me happy. Um, we will continue with this. Like I said, uh, I have things to teach um, for the hashtag um, history mounting community. Um, and a lot of that is Native American. <laughs> Love you guys, but you just, you left it out. Um, you guys are awesome. I really do love you. Um, so we're trying to be all inclusive in the history bounding community, which I think is awesome because we want to include every culture. The history bounder, I've asked her if, you know, like, to showcase like the old um saris um if you know what a sari is it's from india it's basically born in those countries and some of them are just so gorgeous i mean like the fabrics oh my gosh like the fabrics they have now for making those are nowhere compared to the old ones. So she has some fantabulous pieces. Oh my gosh. She showed me pictures of the one that belonged to her grandparents and her parents. Oh my gosh. Like, wow. I can't believe I like real gold thread. Wow. That's amazing. And it survived all these years in storage. Wow. Think about that. When we take care of things so delicately. And they just last like that. And it's the same thing with taking care of each other. Is, you know, we take time aside. To not just take care of our you know, our elders, but children and people around us. You take time aside for that. Oh yeah, something like spoopy happened yesterday. Who else uses the word spoopy? I'm the only one that uses the word spoopy. Anyway, I'm not sure about that. Wait, no. Sophia Nagar uses that word. I heard her say spoopy once. 
um, <laughs> which was funny. Um, but anyway, I got some spoopy footage on my uh, live stream from Instagram yesterday, and I have to get permission from a fellow YouTube creator. I mean, it's like you couldn't see him in the chat um, because the chat wasn't showing on just my phone for like downloading it to the, the video, downloading it to my phone so you can't see, you know, anything that he typed in. He couldn't stay in my live chat too long because he had to go do something with his, uh, with his wife and kids. So, um, that was all right. But like, I was here alone and you guys know that like that chair is haunted. My dress form is haunted, but I was nowhere. Like, in here, it, most of the action was out there and my chair you saw that? The haunted chair is moving because it's on camera. Anyway, um, why is it just showing like that? Oh, I know, because I don't have it turned towards the other part. Now, if I had it turned more this way, then you'd be able to see that too. So, um, yeah, like what? Um, not to freak myself out here. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Um, if you want me to do like another uh, round for a uh, scary story time, you leave that in the comments. I do still have a lot of scary stories from when I was growing up from military bases. Oh my goodness. Like you'd have to be holding on to your popcorn and hopefully it has unsalted butter. I've never liked the salted butter. I don't know about you, but that's just not my thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, keep some hand cream next to your sewing machine. Um, and I really love this from Sun City Soaps and Candles. And if you notice, where is it, right? The irrational process of that is gone. Oh, and by the way, people that have left comments, um, I have to go back into my videos, legit go back into my videos to answer you anymore. And then for some stupid, spoopy reason, my answers seem to disappear. Let me ever know if those duplicate. I don't know what the heck is going on with that. Like if it's YouTube or if it's something else. I know I need to get new equipment, um, for a video, but, um, yeah. But until then, like I said, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And we'll be right back in a few as soon as I'm done putting that together. And um, then we'll do another try-on. That'll be fun, right? Another try-on. Um, because then I have to place where the zipper goes. And um, I'm thinking about doing a zipper in an eye hook closure. But, you know, you can just, like, hand sew an eye hook. Those are so easy. You can do the invisible eye hook closure. So easy. Mm-hmm. So, um, I will see you soon.